Hi, thank you for joining me today. So we're going to answer one of the most common questions that we get asked daily, and that is what else do I need after I've purchased my stove? So we're going to answer that based on the fact that if you've got an existing chimney, then you're planning on lining that chimney. So we're in the warehouse today, and we've got all the bits out here just to show you um, what are the bits and pieces that you need. So the first question that you need to ask yourself is what diameter liner am I going to require? And that will generally be firstly based on the outlet size of the stove that you're purchasing. So if the stove has a five inch flue outlet and is DEFRA approved, you can install a five inch liner. However, if that stove has a five inch outlet but is not DEFRA approved and you're planning on burning wood, then you will need to step that liner up to a six inch to comply with the regulations. If the stove you have is a six inch flue outlet, then you will need to install a six inch liner or above. Um, you can never reduce it down. It'll always need to be the same diameter as a minimum or greater. Um, the other question you need to ask yourself is what fuel will we be burning? So predominantly most people will be burning wood with occasional smokeless fuel maybe. In that case, you'll need to generally order a 316 grade liner. Now, if you are finding that you're gonna be burning more smokeless fuel, then you can up that to the higher grade 904 grade liner. Some people opt for that anyway, I think because they see the two there and think, see one's more expensive, so go for the more expensive one, which is okay. Um, it'd be absolutely fine, but if you are just burning wood, the 316 grade is absolutely fine and it will save you obviously a little bit of money. Um, so let's take from the top. So we're gonna look at the cows to start with. So these are cows here. So this is a pot hanger cow made by a company called Colt. We've used them for about seven, eight years now and they make the cows and the adapters too. Just good, reliable pieces of kit. Uh, never get any problems with them, always well received and, and a good price. Uh, so obviously with a cow, something that you don't really want to be replacing if it fails early on because it's a bit of a nightmare getting back up from the chimney to replace it. So this will sit up onto the chimney pot, drop down, and then these fins here will go around the actual chimney pot, not inside. You want to make sure when you're sliding it down you don't put them on the inside. And then a big jubilee clip here will wrap all the way around the outside and fix that in place. And then on the base here, oops, drop that. Again, three more clips here. The flue liner will just slot in place here. Again, you wanna make sure these are on the outside. And then the smaller Jubilee clip will just fasten that in place. So that will look a little bit like this when it's attached to the liner itself. Now these are normal cows for normal, normal situations. However, if you know you're in a in an area that has a really bad downdraft problem and you've had a stove before an open fire and you've got airs rushing down the chimney and smoke's pouring back and you know that is a common issue, we recommend this one here. This is an anti-downdraft cow, stops the downdraft coming down the chimney, still a pot hanger. So it's got the same clips here on the side, but just more, it's a little bit more money and you only really need it though if you do have a specific downdraft issue. It's not something you need to purchase unless you do have that specific issue. So the liner itself will be fed down the chimney from the top. So ours is a sheetal liner, it has arrows on it, which need to be facing up, not down. A lot of people do ask the question, what way do they need to be facing? They need to be facing up. So the direction of the flow of the gas is going upwards, so that way the arrows go up. So you'll always feed a liner down the chimney. You never pull on it too hard because you can tear them apart if you pull on them too hard. So Again, are made from Colt. We sell these little nose cones, uh, which just guide the, guide the liner down the chimney, down to the bottom, or you can obviously make your own, or even sometimes people use the adapters, which we'll come on to shortly, just to attach them to the, a piece of rope, just to guide them down the chimney, around the bends, um, which is always useful. So at the bottom, you'd have a MA adapter. What that does is the liner will push into here with these wing nut pieces here, slot in place and then tighten up and then a few self-tapping screws can go in there too, extra safe. And then this will then go inside the flue pipe. So the liner will go directly into here and then the flue pipe goes into the stove. So if you notice, everything's always going inside the other piece. So the liner is going inside here, the adapter's going in there, and the flue pipe into the stove. So any tar or water, anything dripping down the liner goes into the stove and isn't dripping down the outside, burning off and obviously causing a problem there. So you've got those pieces there. 
And next we go on to blanking plate or register plate, some people call it, but if it's a liner, it's a blanking plate. So the liner will be attached to this. We'll go through there and attach into the chimney here, like so. So you'd have brackets, which I can't hold both of them. That might stay, that's gonna stay. So you've got brackets here for the sides. And then the long brackets too, which will go obviously on the front, just about there. The blanking plates will always be cut down to size. So we do them from 800 by 400, 1000 by 400, or 1250 by 600. And they're designed to all be cut down to size. And we'll always have a six inch hole cut in the middle. If you have a five inch liner going through it, we'll provide a reducer plate here, which takes it down to a five inch. And they'll always have this little blanking plate at the side here, which gives you access inside the chimney as well. So any debris that falls down, it can all be cleared away. They also come with a tub of fire cement. This is enough to do generally easily around a blanking, blanking plate and inside the top of the flue collar as well. Some people prefer to use silicone. So if you do prefer to use the silicone, because it can be easier to use on the gun, just uh, drop us a message if you're ordering, just say can have the silicone instead of the flu, um, the fire cement, and we'll, we'll put that in for you, but everyone's got their own preference really. So let's try and take this off now. Here we go. So that's the blanking plate. Finally, obviously you've got all that now in place, it's the flue pipe. So this is 1.2 mil thick, vitreous enamel, Italian made flue pipe. Again, it's a company we've dealt with for about 10 years. Reliable, never have a problem, easy to install, easy to use. 250 mil lengths, 500 mil lengths, all coming 1,000 mil lengths. Um, tapered ends all go inside the actual flue collars, and then they can be cut down too. So this end here, you can cut it down if you need to negotiate it and you can't maneuver the liner up or down, so they can be cut down, which is always useful. And then, as I mentioned, it always goes inside the top of the stove. They do come with access hatches as well, if required. That's useful for some stoves that don't have removable baffle, removable baffle plates is always uh, um, an advantage. Final thing on the site, CO2 alarm. You can buy them all over the place. We do provide them as well. Um, something that's needed for every single installation, whether it be yourself who's installing, getting it signed off, or, uh, or a heat test registered installer, you'll always need to have a CO2 alarm. But that's about it really. That's a general kit, what most people will need um, when they're installing a chimney liner. Obviously one thing I didn't mention, sorry, is the actual length of the liner. Obviously it comes in from five all the way up to sort of 15 meters. So always make sure whatever liner you're ordering, you order a little bit more than what you think because there's nothing worse than when you drop a liner down the chimney and it's not long enough. Um, it's always best to have a little bit of excess to cut it off, any little mistakes on the bottom. It's always better to have a little bit more. That's about it. I hope that's been helpful. Um, always, if you need any questions, just let us know. Thank you.